Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Winds of Numacera, which is brought to you by Dark Rose Studios. It's for two to four players, ages 12 and up, and games generally run about 60 to 90 minutes. Winds of Numacera is a kingdom building strategy board game that shares the same world and characters as the acclaimed graphic novel from Dark Horse. Each player controls a different kingdom that comes with a trio of unique heroes to play as and customize. There are multiple ways to win the game and whoever is first to any of them wins. Vast, beautiful, and dangerous, the world of Athera is full of unique cultures and kingdoms, all vying for control of the landscape and each will stop at nothing to advance its power. As the leader of your people, your goal is to amass resources and create the most powerful kingdom in all of Athera, so that your name will be remembered long after you are gone. There are several ways to achieve this, by conquering strongholds, slaying your opponent's heroes, mastering skills, or earning new class titles. You can rule benevolently, cruelly, or anything in between. The choice is yours. So whichever path you take, you will need to acquire assets to advance your heroes and grow your kingdom. Through exploration of Athera's many distinct environments, you will uncover rare items and enlist new allies to assist in your campaign. But exploration also has its risks. Athera is a dangerous place, full of ancient secrets and hidden obstacles, so be ever vigilant. The winds of Numacera are blowing. Right out of the gate, I have to comment on just how beautiful this game is, from the artwork to the displays, and also the ease of learning to play. It's all right here on your player board. Just simply fantastic. There's some icons and things you have to learn from the cards, but really, the game is very intuitive and quick to play, and also lots of things to master. So I played this game as a two player, three player, and four player, and I have to say that two player works well, but three and four player is where this game really starts to shine. And I also have to comment on the fact that this game is based on that world from their graphic novel that Dark Horse published. It is so cool to have the backstory of everything that's going on and why you're playing these kingdoms and why you're trying to conquer and so forth. But that graphic novel adds a lot of flavor to the game. Definitely worth checking out. And of course, you don't have to know the graphic novel in order to play this game. I just love extra flavor, extra theme in games, and that's just one of my favorite things. Now, you as the players are going to get a different player board in different colors, different kingdoms, and they're very unique to that kingdom. You have custom build trees or tech trees, basically related to your kingdom, that have special unique abilities, and is really going to show how asymmetric these different kingdoms are, and what powers are available for you, and attributes and abilities. All those things. Each kingdom also has three of their own specific heroes. These cards are fantastic. They even have foil on them. They're just really beautiful. Again, beautiful game. Uh, you have those three, you'll be placing them on the hero slot. Now, below there, you'll be keeping track of all your stats. This is, again, a dry erase board. So you'll be writing those in and you'll be able to augment it and change it through the course of the game as needed. And in the top, in the middle, is where you'll be doing your attacking or defending, adding up all your scores to see who wins. Below that is how to play the game, basically. Everything you're doing in each of the phases and what you're gonna be available to you as you play in each of the turns. So fantastic, you literally can play from your player board, I love it. But I will also mention they have one of the best player aids I have ever seen. It is simply amazing, this player aid. Just, they did such a good job with this thing. I've never seen a player aid to this degree and I love player aids so much. And this is now my favorite. Everyone should take note, this is so well done. Uh, also, on your player board, you have your capital or the money that you're going to be uh, having through the course of the game. And there's definitely metal coins in the game, which again, I love tactile experience. And it'll show you at the top above the capital what your starting capital is, as well as battle cards. So there are battle cards within the exploration deck. You'll fish out randomly like 15 of those, and you're going to deal some to each of the players based on how many battle cards they start with. These are kept private and in your hand. So four different ways to win the game. And at the very top and on the side of your board, you'll be tracking with the cards that you're gonna be using in order to fulfill those requirements. So first, we have our class cards. You have five class cards, every player has them, and you're trying to fulfill the requirements of those cards as you move through the game. And as you do, you can place them here, showing how many you've done, and if you get five, 
you're going to win the game. The next one is champions. Defeating three is going to cause you to win. And also the next slot here is for strongholds. Defeating these strongholds will also allow you to win the game. And finally, skills. If you master a skill, get four cards of any particular type, you're going to win. So it really turns into a race. Absolutely. And the thing about the skill cards, it's very expensive to level up in those skill cards. Every time you go to the next level, it's 10 times that level. So it's really a pricey way to try to win the game. But it does give you multiple options and each of the kingdoms may have strengths around going one direction or the other. So gameplay here is super straightforward, easy to learn. I mean, really, you're just gonna be doing the things here in the middle of your board. First thing you're checking for, do you have any cards that say play or use this action at the start of your turn? You'll do that first, but in general, the main thing you're doing first is going to be going through these exploration cards. You will always draw one. Now, there are six different types though. Couple things you're looking for right away at the bottom of the card that you pull. Is there an eye symbol? If there is, you have to deal with this card immediately. And in the bottom right corner, we'll show you what type of card it is. So we've got boon cards, which are gonna really be a benefit to you in most cases. And I like that there's this either or choice and how you use these cards and how you benefit from them. And then we have our terrible cards because it's not all good. You are in a dangerous world after all. So here we have our hazard cards and there's gonna be various different types of these and they really do wreak havoc on you. And then we've got our Maven cards and these are gonna give you special abilities. You have a spot on your player board to put these and you can save them potentially for later use but you have to make some choices on how you're going to use them. So you'll put them to the bottom of your board if you have them in hand and then again decide how you want to use them. And then we have our battle cards. So you won't be really be using this card at this time. You'll be putting it in your hand, keeping it secret because when you go into battle, those battle cards are gonna really add a lot to your total value and hopefully push you over the edge to win. And then we also have special items, like I love this one, the Sword of Embers. Just so cool. I love the abilities and different cards and different types of things you can acquire. It really does at times feel like an RPG as you build up your characters and so forth. So these may have requirements on them though, on a certain level of things, but you just read the card on all of these. You'll just read the card to understand what you're gonna do. It's all very straightforward. And then finally, we have our Pool of Essence cards. These are rare and they're super powerful. You're tapping into the essence of the world and they do all kinds of different things for you. But these are definitely cards that you wanna keep and play and they're just super powerful. So you have to be mindful about when you want to use them and how to use them. So once you've explored and dealt with that card, then you move on, you've got a set of other actions you can perform. And you know what, you can actually do these before the explore, but in general, explore first. Uh, the thing here with these other actions is that you can just do as many as you want until you're done, and then you move on to phase two. But we've got to buy, equip, trade and use, so buying is straightforward. You have the World Forge where you can get armor, weapons and items to add to your character. Again, very RPG-esque. And skills, adding more skills to your character. Again, these can get very expensive as you level up in a particular skill. And then for trading, now trading is really whatever you wanna do. You can say, hey, I'll give you a couple coins to not attack me in the next round. They say, sure, but in the next round they still attack you. But you can trade whatever you wanna trade in this game, but you may find your fellow players getting a little backstabby. Now also you have use. Now some cards will have the use keyword on them and that's what you'll use around those. So it just those actions you're gonna be performing based on what you need to do with your character and move them up, level them up, whatever you're gonna do. And then it's time for phase two. And then you have to make a tough choice. Are you going to attack or are you going to build? So if you choose to build, you're gonna be moving down your build tree, getting special abilities and capital perhaps. So you start with this default value and you'll get money to do this. So they're paying you to go down the build tree. So it makes sense to do this. But you'll start with a default value and as you defeat strongholds, that will up the value that you will get. You'll see the icon that references here. And you'll add it to your player board and you'll just keep track of it there with the dry erase, right? And then you'll mark off the next item in your build tree. Now there might be multiple paths, but you can never jump to the bottom of your build tree and knock it off, obviously. Now there's three different types here. You have once, repeatable, and ongoing. So depending on how those work and the different items here, you have to be looking out for those icons. And again, those icons are all referenced on your player board. 
if you choose to attack, you can go after a fellow player's hero, or you can go after strongholds. Now, you'll see at the top, in the middle of your board, you can start to calculate out your score here. Now, if you are the attacker, you'll put your attack value here. If you're the defender, the other player, you'll put your defense value here. If you're stronghold, you'll put their value here. So, you'll calculate from there, and then you're gonna roll the battle dice, put that value in, and that'll be your total, but, you get to also play battle cards. Each defender, well, not strongholds, but the defender and the attacker can play a battle card. You flip them over. Now you have to pay for these cards. Either you pay in capital coin or you have to pay in power. You spend some of your health, basically, in order to activate this card. It might be worth it at times, but there's so many different types of battle cards and how you use them. It may really swing the battle in your favor. And of course, Whoever has the highest value is going to win. In the case of ties, the attacker always wins. Now, in the case of strongholds, if you win the battle, you acquire the card and put it at the top of your board. However, with the heroes when you're battling, whatever the difference is, that's how much damage they're going to take. If they still have power or health left, then they stay in play. And if they don't, then you're going to acquire that card and put it at the top of your board getting closer to your three that you need to win the game, but they have the next hero in line that they can use for the next round. Oh, and when you roll that battle dice, it does have negative values on it. So you as the attacker, you could still lose and take damage. But those are the basics around what you're doing on a turn. Obviously, there's lots of cards and lots of abilities that come into play to augment your battling as well as what your hero is capable of, right? What different armor it has, what weapons, and so forth all add to the stats when you battle back and forth. So you are trying to go for supremacy in this game, but again, it's also a race, trying to do one of the four possible ways to win. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower Paid Preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, the game feels complete, beyond a prototype. Everything looks amazing, like I said before, just such a well-done game, super easy to engage with and learn. But what really comes into play is how you get the right cards and acquire the right stats and abilities, as well as, you know, the different types of items to augment your character. It really does feel like an RPG as you travel through this world. And this game has high player interaction. So you need to be on the lookout for things like maybe you have an ability that gives you coin when someone else builds. There's lots of things like that through this game. So you have to be on your toes and pay attention to what everyone's doing throughout. And I love the exploration cards and all the possibilities, even the hazards, just a lot of fun to be had there. Just, you know, again, this game really caught me by surprise how much I enjoyed it. Uh, just lots of neat things here. Now it does have take that, so you gotta keep that in mind, but games play fairly quick. And again, super easy to teach and learn, but lots of intricacies beyond there. And I like that aspect a lot. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you like this review or whatever you just watched, wasn't it amazing? Uh, check out our channel, Dice Tower. Uh, we have all kinds of things. We review games, we do top tens, we play games live. It's all about board games, but especially the people who play them. Check out Dice Tower YouTube channel.